My name is Jackie. I'm an early, early childhood teacher. So today we, it's an extension of the lesson we get last time about integration of lang mathematics in language activity. And in the last lesson, we read the story to the children about the hungry caterpillar. So today we want to see how we shall use the mathematical concept to integrate in, in the language or in the story that, that we read. So you are most welcome. Let us look at how we do comparison inside language stories. Okay. So we want to look at comparison and we are using the characters in the story. We saw that uh, there was a plum, the caterpillar ate a plum. So the child will be comparing a big plum and a small plum. That is comparison. The child will be comparing a big pairs with the smaller pairs. We'll find even the child trying to put inside and see how many smalls are fitting in the big one. That is comparison. You can do uh, orange because a big orange and a small orange. The child can do a big apple and a small apple. He can do a big caterpillar and a small caterpillar. That is comparison. Or he does a big butterfly and a small butterfly. So this is comparison. You find that in the mathematical center, because we have nine we have nine areas for learning. So you find that a child who decides to go at a math center, one does comparison and another one will be like, no, he wants to do ordering. So let's see how he does ordering. So here, the teacher has set the strategic area of mathematics with the pictures. So here, the child is ordering according to the days of the week. Remember the caterpillar on Monday, it ate an apple. Then on Tuesday, it ate some pears. On Wednesday, it ate some plums. On Thursday, some oranges. On Saturday, some lollipop. On Friday, a cake. And Sunday, the, the it caterpillar ate, it, 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 it became a butterfly after eating a leaf. So, you find that a child may decide now to go to do ordering. So, he has ordered according to the days of the week, which is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So, you find the child has, that, has done that. Or if he has done it wrongly, then it is the work of the teacher now to assist and put it in the right order. So he orders, or the child orders according to the days of the week or according to the fruits that the caterpillar was eating. So you find that it is mathematics being integrated. Or he may decide to count them. If he's a rot counter, we'll find the child in 1, 2, 4, 8, 10. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But when you ask which one is the, 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 the first one, the child doesn't know. Another child, remember in ECD we have another center called the writing zone center. So the child who doesn't want to manipulate will find herself or himself has gone to the writing zone and he he wants to write. Remember in the writing center you put also materials ready for the learners and with the pen with the paper so the child will will think on the first day what did the caterpillar eat so the child will draw an an apple in there the second day what did the caterpillar eat the caterpillar ate pears two pears you find the child drawing two on the third day what happened the caterpillar ate three plants so, rational counters that are able to write the correct figures. So, that is still ordering what happened on the first day, what happened on the second day, like that. Now, when we are done with ordering, we look at one-to-one -one counting. And I, will, I wish you to have a look at a child who does one-to-one -one Counting or who has known how to do one-to-one -one counting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Seven, eight, nine, ten. How many are they, all of them? Count faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many are they? Ten. How many are they? Ten. So we've just seen an example of a child who is uh, becoming a rational counter and he has been doing one-to-one -one counting. One-to-one, -one, it means the child picks one object at a time, the way the child was picking. One, two, three. It means when he does it very well, he's becoming a rational counter. But... Uh, a rot counter is a child who has not achieved that stage. So you'll find the child doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is a rot counter. But the child that we've just seen is a rational counter because he was picking one object at, at a time. Start counting. This. One, two, three, four, five. How many are they? Seven. Now, to emphasize rational counting, the child after counting one to one, you, when you ask the, 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 the total number of the counted objects, the child is able to tell you the total number. But a child who has developed that, again, when you ask what, how many are they, you'll find that he goes back again to start counting. So that is all about rational counting. And when it comes to writing, you find that, uh, for example, you tell the child, count and shed. So the child will count on first day, the, the caterpillar ate apples, and how many apples? It's one. So the child will just shed only one apple. The second day, the caterpillar ate apple, uh, pears. So how many are they? Two. So the child is just supposed to count one, two, and shed the first two only. This one shows is a rational, uh, is doing one to one counting because he has to count one, two, three, and shed the first one. That is in, in uh, writing purpose. Now, if I can show you this, if you have such card in the class, and your child is a rational counter, the way the other boy was doing, he will point at the real letter and say it, one. When you point at this one, he'll tell you five. When you point at this one, the child will tell you nine. When you point at this one, the child will tell you seven. But look at a rot counter. A rot counter does, can count in the sequence like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But when you ask such a child, show me number six, the child will show you this. Show me number four, the child will show you this. Why? Because the child has not recognized the number symbols. But the one who, when you mix up the numbers and is able to do it, then he, has, he is a rational counter. So let's see an example of a rational counter. After doing one to one, an example is here. We are using this flashcard as um, to represent a leaf where the eggs were laid in the story. So we want to form, you find that when you mix numbers down here, a rational counter will look, this is number one, he puts, then he looks, what is the, the next number? It is number two, he comes and looks, what is the next number? It's number three. What is the next number? It's number four. What is the next number? It's number five. He looks number six. 
Number seven. Why? Because these are the seven days that the caterpillar grew into a butterfly. So this only a child who succeeded at one-to-one -one counting is able now to do this work. Then we call him or her a rational counter. Another exercise for a rational counter is this. Now, in the writing zone in the ECD center, the, you might have put these cards. So the child will be like, wow, in, during language we read about caterpillars. And here, how many caterpillars are they? The child will count one, two. So he looks for number two, and maybe you, you've guided them. Circle the number of those caterpillars. So after the child counting one, two, he comes and knows this is number two. Then he circles number two. That one is a rational counter. He's recognizing the numbers. The same way he will count the numbers in sequence according to how they have been written. Another rational counter we give such work for filling in the puzzle. So a rational counter will count one. What is the missing number? He will know the missing number is two. Then he counts again one, two, three. After three, we go to four. Then he fills in the puzzle like that. But a rot counter cannot do this. So for us as parents to enable our children to be rational counters, they, we have to do very many manipulative activities of one to one. The real practical way of counting using objects in the environment. So we also wanted to learn about uh, cardinal numbers. Cardinal numbers are the real numbers now. After the child reading, counting them, they're seeing the cards. So when you have such a card, the child will just know one. It's one apple. The child will know after one, it is two. Two pears that the caterpillar ate. This card shows three, and these are three plants that the caterpillar ate. We put pictures just to confirm the number. One apple, this is number one. Two apples, one, two, number two. Three plums, one, two, three, number three. I've only used the pictures because I don't have the concrete or real apples. So a real uh, dab teacher brings the real objects. Bring the real apple, bring the real pears, bring the real plums in class so that children connect to their nature. And lastly, we wanted to look at ordinal numbers. So a child who has understood all the cardinal numbers by filling in, manipulating them, he has understood very well, then we can introduce what we call ordinal numbers. Ordinal numbers, you can start with the children themselves, maybe queuing on a line, queue, making a queue, so that uh, you teach them by just the word. So here, we want to arrange according to how the caterpillar was eating. So when you are introducing the, the ordinal numbers, you use just the language for them to hear. You tell them one means first, two means second, and three means third, four means fourth. You can do it practically by making children to line up and you ask who is the first like that. So here you can just use questions according to the level of the learners you are teaching, and ask them, eh, what, what happened on the second day? So the child will tell you the caterpillar ate two pears. What happened on the third day? Like that. So orally you use the, um, the, the orals when talking about the ordinal numbers. So 
Uh, and when they have now known, they can learn according to the level, maybe the entries, they learn how to write the name first, they learn how to write the word second, they learn how to write the word third, they can learn how to write the word fourth after orally knowing it. So slowly remember you teach one concept at a time. If they're done with this, then maybe you can teach them the ordinal numbers in this form one meaning first so they add the the, the letter sounds of the the, the 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 abbreviation of number one on ordinal numbers is first with a s with s t second with n d and third with r d the rest are t h t h to signify ordinal numbers so remember, ECD goes up to grade three. So maybe a grade one child is the one doing this. Or alternatively, those who passed very well in the foundation level can start doing this because when we teach them how to write the depths on the board, then they learn to do it. So that's what we wanted to share today about integration of mathematics inside our inside language. And we've seen Still children can do numbers, still children can do counting, still children can do measurement, all the, uh, all the mathematics skills, we've seen them being reinforced here. So we can integrate them. So, and still the, 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 the topic about the caterpillar is being reinforced. That is why it is important for us to integrate activities. There is reinforcement of the topic, reinforcement of the theme, reinforcement of the concept that you want to teach as a, as a teacher. So we can do these practices at home and you can use the real materials at home. Otherwise, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe. Remember to like and share with others. So let's move on to the next lesson. We shall see what it will be. Thank you and bye.